Now we are going to discuss the effect of temperature on the equilibrium constant. Remember that uh, the equilibrium constant was uh, defined as the uh, standard uh, uh, Gibbs free energy change at constant uh, some at some defined uh, pressure which was 1 bar. So it, it means that the uh, equilibrium constant will uh, now change with respect to temperature because there was no specification with respect to temperature. So uh, we can actually uh, define the equilibrium constant in uh, different, uh, I mean like uh, there are uh, different ways of uh, uh, thinking about how the equilibrium constant is changing uh, with respect to temperature, but uh, we'd like to connect it to the uh, heat uh, uh, or the enthalpy of the reaction because usually you see uh, you uh, try to uh, follow the uh, heat released in the reaction in the chemical reaction uh, but here we are talking about the delta g not the delta h but the uh, question is how will you connect it and that connection was meant by van Hoff and uh, van Hoff did a lot of work on uh, thermodynamics as well as chemical kinetics and he studied many different systems and he was the first to uh, receive the Nobel Prize in chemistry and also uh, he and uh, Oswald uh, together started the first uh, journal uh, or uh, basically periodical on physical chemistry. Around 1887 they started uh, together this uh, uh, beautiful uh, uh, journal uh, called Jaitsev of Physical Chemistry. Uh, you can actually uh, read about it more on uh, some uh, web resource. Now uh, we we'll, are we'll just going to uh, discuss uh, the Van Hoff treatment, uh, how the equilibrium constant is going to affect the temperature. Now uh, what we are going to do uh, is already known to you. Uh, we, we talked about uh, this uh, how uh, G tends to or uh, say uh, the, uh, the reaction free energy or the free energy has a variation with uh, temperature. Uh, that uh, if you remember that uh, there was a gibbs helmholtz uh, equation which we uh, discussed sometime back and uh, that basically tells that if we had uh, uh, this thing uh, d g of t dt that will be nothing but minus uh, h by uh, it was t square and similarly, we also wrote it in the uh, differential form in the sense that uh, if this is correct, then we can say that, okay, fine, uh, what is the value of this quantity? So that will be nothing but minus, uh, uh, we can write it uh, term by term. So d dt of uh, delta g is nothing but uh, g2 minus g1. So suppose it, the system is undergoing a finite change from state 1 to state 2 divided by t and now we can actually uh, very cleverly write the uh, gibbs Durham equation in this form. So it is nothing but uh, d dt of uh, g2 by t minus uh, d dt of g1 by t. So according to this definition again it, this is uh, the Gibbs Helmholtz equation or Gibbs Helmholtz relation and then we see that we have minus uh, h2 by rt square minus h1 by rt square which is nothing but minus h2 minus h1 divided by t square there won't be any r which is nothing but minus delta h by t square now that exactly what we are going to use and then uh, what we say here is that uh, uh, we can actually uh, write the van Hoff equation now remember that uh, we also could uh, write it uh, in terms of, uh, I mean, how, how do you, uh, this is basically the gibbs almost relation, but the question is how do you connect it to the, uh, to the equilibrium constant. Now it is uh, very obvious because we have a delta g here, uh, 
So uh, we'll connect it to the definition of uh, equilibrium constant, and you already know that uh, delta g zero is minus R T L N K or k equilibrium. So we can write that uh, L N K equilibrium is nothing but minus delta G reaction free energy and the standard state divided by RT. So we can uh, write it instead of taking the equilibrium constant versus temperature we can actually write it DLN K equilibrium DT and then we'll have minus delta G R0 1 over R you can take common and basically DDT of this quantity. Now that uh, we are going to, now we are going to use the Fantoff equation and we already know that it is minus delta H by uh, T square. Now this minus and this minus cancels so we will have 1 over R T square or we can just write it as a delta H by R T square. So uh, alternatively you could also uh, write the gibbs selmos equation in, in slightly different fashion. Now instead of uh, writing it as uh, like this, you could write it as say uh, this 1 over t uh, term, you could actually bring it uh, forward and uh, then you could write it in terms of dln k equilibrium d 1 over t, how it varies. Now you can easily figure out what is this quantity. So d of 1 over t is nothing but minus the derivative of the 1 over t, so 1 over t square with a minus sign and uh, times the differential of t. So that will be dt by uh, with minus 1 over t. So what we could write, uh, right from uh, this equation, uh, this particular equation, this is 1 over t square. So that 1 over t square term, uh, we are just bringing on the other side, I mean, like this. Uh, we can, if we just bring it on the other side, it will be basically multiplied by t square or you can divide it by 1 over t square and include a minus sign and then uh, this you will get. So either this equation or this equation where uh, DLNK dt is uh, del h by uh, rt square is known as a Van equations uh, for a variation of the equilibrium constant with temperature. Now uh, when uh, you have uh, the delta h for the reaction is say uh, positive which means it is an endothermic reaction. Remember that delta H is the heat change associated with the reaction and heat change positive we say uh, in the th in the, by our convention when the surrounding supplies energy to the system. So these are uh, the endothermic reactions that we discussed. If that is uh, negative, that is positive, then the slope of DLNK uh, dt uh, 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 basically the slope of ln k versus t curve will be positive uh, because delta h is positive in this case. Otherwise if we have an exothermic reaction where heat is released and uh, then if you plot ln k equilibrium versus temperature then you will see a negative slope. So uh, the then you can actually uh, predict the uh, how the how the, this reaction is uh, endothermic or exothermic by looking at the equilibrium constant or the, whether the equilibrium constant is uh, changing with temperature or not. Now what is the essence of that is that uh, well, positive slope means actually we are having uh, when uh, when the ln equilibrium when we are increasing the temperature if the dt is high and then we are seeing ln equilibrium ln k equilibrium sorry or equivalently we can say k equilibrium that actually is also increasing for endothermic reactions which means uh, that for endothermic reactions if we supply heat from outside how do you change the dt uh, the dt means actually it's the temperature of the system you are raising but that you can only do by supplying heat from outside uh, 
So if I supply heat from outside so and increase the temperature, then the K equilibrium of the reaction is also increasing, which means I'll have more product divided by uh, the product versus reactant ratio will be more, which means the forward reaction is getting uh, more and more favored. Because if you remember, whatever is the reaction, uh, what, whichever way you write it, nu A plus whatever uh, is going to uh, nu B plus whatever reactions, ultimately the equilibrium constant is uh, can be written as the forward versus reverse reaction which means uh, if that is going higher, uh, this means actually the forward by reverse is getting higher. So the forward is increasing and the reverse is decreasing or uh, um, in some way, which means you are getting more product than the reactant. You are shifting the equilibrium towards a new, a new site in a very positive way. This exactly the same opposite thing will happen. So we see that uh, for this case, if I increase it, uh, this ln uh, k equilibrium for an exothermic reaction or equivalently the equilibrium constant that decreases for an exothermic reaction which means if I had uh, reduced the temperature for an exothermic reaction then I could actually increase uh, the uh, equilibrium constant in the uh, or the product ratio but usually uh, you might have a kinetic barrier meaning that uh, the reactants uh, may need a very very uh, very much initial temperature uh, uh, some amount of heat in order to uh, form the product uh, so which means actually they uh, always uh, have a kinetic barrier in the sense that they need to uh, surmount some uh, amount of energy or they need to actually spend some amount of energy to cross a barrier and uh, that uh, crossing of the barrier uh, we uh, will discuss in detail when we discuss the kinetics uh, part uh, this is known as the activation energy and uh, that energy has to be supplied first so uh, it's not always that uh, don't think that if I go to a zero Kelvin temperature then the reaction will be the fastest it's not like that so you need a minimum temperature and then only you can uh, see that okay fine I'll have a maximum amount of the product so always uh, that's the reason we keep uh, this temperature at an optimal temperature if you reduce this too much uh, then actually you cannot get anything for example you have studied it like uh, for uh, for this famous reaction which we'll also discuss when we uh, consider the catalysis part is going to say uh, ammonia uh, nitrogen and hydrogen which is extremely important reaction uh, for our survival now this uh, reaction uh, is actually exothermic it, it produces a lot of heat so if you have a quencher of heat or, or basically if you reduce the temperature then the uh, reaction will shift uh, towards this side the forward side and you will have more and more ammonia however you will realize that you need uh, some amount of energy in order to uh, proceed this reaction because the reaction actually involves a step where actually this nitrogen molecules need to be uh, the bond between the nitrogen atoms in the nitrogen molecule uh, needs to be broken to generate uh, this uh, nitrogen atom which will react with the hydrogen atoms to give you some product and this reaction happens always in presence of some iron catalyst and we'll discuss in detail how the surface catalysis works and then when it happens then we see that uh, this breakage of the bonds requires some energy so that is basically the activation barrier of this reaction because it needs to break the bond and then only it can go to the product side. Uh, so uh, that's why uh, Heber when he uh, did this uh, rea famous reaction, he kept the temperature I think around 550 degrees centigrade uh, and that uh, he called as the optimal temperature. So you need a optimal temperature uh, to uh, be maintained throughout so that you get the maximum product ratio. It's not like that uh, for every exothermic reaction. Uh, you have to, since actually heat is uh, released, you, you can actually quench the heat. Of course, you can uh, increase the yield, but inherently the system also needs some heat. Otherwise, the reaction will not start at all. So uh, now we'll in, uh, conclude our part on this uh, chemical equilibrium. So to summarize what we uh, discuss is that we uh, first discussed the uh, 
concept of uh, the uh, how to write the uh, equilibrium constant. So uh, we, we showed that uh, the k equilibrium uh, or minus RTL and k equilibrium can be connected to the reaction gives free energy at, uh, at standard state. Uh, prior to that, we actually defined what is the reaction gives free energy, what is delta L0, how you can write it as a difference between the chemical potentials and uh, then we kind of expanded it for a general case and we uh, showed that uh, this uh, delta G uh, reaction free energy can be written as a part which is delta the standard part which is actually connected to this uh, k equilibrium which is nothing but minus uh, rt ln k equilibrium and plus uh, rt ln q where q is the quotient for uh, any a at any time now q will be equal to k equilibrium only under equilibrium and then we uh, said we basically showed what is the expression for q or k and we showed that it is uh, nothing but the uh, summation over all this uh, sorry multiplication over all the terms where uh, the reactants of the products are uh, uh, you take the activity of that particular thing and raise it uh, to the power of the stoichiometric coefficient but this coefficient will be positive for products and negative for reactants uh, so that we, we say when it, what is the stoichiometric coefficient for a we'll say always minus new a will never say that it is a uh, new way or that way so the or i mean uh, so the negative sign has to be included there and similarly at if it, it happens at equilibrium that uh, means it is a uh, equilibrium constant and then we talked about the effect of external uh, agents like effect of uh, temperature as well as pressure uh, initially we talked about pressure and then we talked about uh, temperature and that actually explains how uh, if you want to make a change the system will always try to counteract the change which is related to a principle which you studied in high school known as Las Atelier principle and we explained uh, why the Las Atelier principle is like that. We uh, showed you that how uh, if the pressure varies how the degree of dissociation changes. We also showed you how if the temperature varies how basically uh, an exothermic or the endothermic reactions are controlled and uh, so uh, this is uh, basically the summary of this uh, part uh, which we call as equilibrium and then uh, we'll uh, discuss uh, one application uh, actually two applications of uh, on thermodynamics on, or the equilibrium thermodynamics one is uh, the electrochemistry part uh, where we talked about what is the electromotive force of uh, a uh, electrochemical cell, uh, a galvanic cell, uh, uh, how basically uh, it uh, generates electricity and how we can write the electromotive force and connect it to the standard uh, reaction free energy. And the second thing we'll discuss uh, that is on uh, surface chemistry part or again it's an equilibrium surface chemistry in the sense that uh, you have a surface and uh, or, or an interface between two bulk phases and how you can actually uh, formulate the thermodynamics of the interface. How you can uh, say that uh, whether the molecules will train, uh, prefer to stay in the bulk phase more or in the interface more. And then you can also classify the molecules based on that particular characteristics. So these two things we'll uh, discuss in the next lecture. Thank you.